Hello and welcome back to this playlist. Um, we are going to talk about how to calculate the moment of inertia about a two planar axis in completely asymmetric cross section. And after that, we are going to calculate the uh, principal axis of a cross section. So the example of this uh, video is about one L-shaped cross section, which is 120 millimeter from the bottom for the first part, and then 60 millimeter, and in the horizontal direction, 60 millimeter, and then 180. Now assume that a bending moment about horizontal axis is applied to this cross section. First of all, we need to find out uh, the center of this cross section, assuming that the cross section is with a, a homogeneous material and it's not a composite cross section, but because it is completely asymmetric about both axes, uh, we need to find out in x and y direction. First of all, we need to have basic lines. Let's say this is x and this is y. So, based on the basic equation, x bar will be sigma a i x i divided by sigma a i and it will be let's assume we have this rectangle rectangle number one and rectangle number two it's easier so rectangle number one x is 30 millimeter and y from the base is 90 millimeter rectangle number two x is 60 plus 90 150 millimeter and y is 120 plus 30 150 millimeter area of the first section is 180 times 60 per square millimeter the second one is also 108 times 60 per square millimeter so if we have these uh, information then easily with the equation we can calculate x bar which will be 180 times 60 per square millimeter times 30 millimeter plus 180 times 60 per square millimeter times 150 millimeter divided by area, which is 180 times 60 plus 180 times 60 per square millimeter. The result will be 180 divided by 290 millimeter. The same approach for y bar, which is sigma ai, yi divided by sigma ai, and it will be 180 times 60 times 90 per square millimeter, millimeter, plus 180 times 60 times 150, divided by 180 times 60 plus 180 times 60 per square millimeter. So it will be 120 millimeter. First of all, we need to define where the uh, center of this cross section will locate and now we know from the x direction it is going to be 90 millimeter and in y direction it will be 120 this will be x prime and y prime and this is the center of this cross section now we have the center of the cross section we are going to calculate the moment of inertia about these two axes which we can go with the basic equation i x prime will be sigma b h power by 3 divided by 12 plus a times dy power by 2 so the first one will be 60 times 180 power by 3 divided by 12 plus 60 180 times the difference between the centroid of the rectangle one and the centroid of the entire cross section will be the distance in y direction of this point so it will be 30 millimeter power by 2 and then for the other one it will be 180 times 60 power by 3 divided by 12 plus 180 times 60 times now it will be 30 millimeter power by 2 so all the numbers are in millimeter and this will be millimeter power by 4. I calculated this earlier and it is 5.2 10 power by 7 millimeter power by 4. Now i y prime, the same concept, sigma b h power by 3 divided by 12 plus a d x power by 2. So this time b and h are switched because we are calculating moment of inertia about the other axis then it will be 180 times 60 power by 3 divided by 12 plus 180 times 60. Now distance between the centroid and uh, the centroid of rectangle number 1 will be 60 millimeter. 
which is this distance plus the other one will be 60 times 180 power by 3 divided by 12 180 times 60 times the distance from here to new y prime or the centroid in x direction will be 60 millimeter as well this value will be 11 times 10 power by 7 millimeter power by 4 if you have a cross section with only one uh, asymmetric axis then polar moment of inertia will be zero but as far as this is completely asymmetric but uh, about or around both orthogonal axes then moment of inertia or cross or uh, polar moment of inertia will not be zero for calculation of that the base equation is i x prime y prime is sigma i x prime y prime zero plus a times dx times Dy. ix prime y prime zero represents if you have a cross section that is not asymmetric and you have already polar moment of inertia for this case as far as rectangle one and two are both rectangles then the polar moment of inertia will be zero in both cases so let's start with rectangle number one area is 180 times 60 and then dx here the important part is that in ix prime and iy prime you don't need to think about if it is negative or positive because it is always power by two but when it comes to polar moment of inertia you need to consider if it is negative or positive from the centroid of the cross section for rectangle number one the centroid in x prime direction in the negative side as a result it will be considered to be minus 60 and in y direction or y prime direction distance is here and this value is 30 millimeter it is also in the bottom of x prime as a result it is also negative the other one is 180 times 60 for rectangle number 2 x prime is 60 and y prime is 30 to understand it better let's sketch the section one more time so each of these rectangles are 30 millimeter now uh, now x bar is in the distance of 90 so it will be here and the other axis is exactly in this line x prime and y prime so if you look at the rectangle number one center is here and we can see that from the centroid of the entire cross section it is located in minus 60 millimeter and in y prime direction it is minus 30. the other one that we have rectangle number two in x prime direction this is 60 and in y prime direction it is 30. so here you can find out as a result i x prime y prime will be related and it is 3.9 n power by 7. it can be negative or it can be positive in this case it is positive now we have i x prime i y prime and i x prime y prime what we need to do calculation of the principal axis in order to find out the principal axis of a cross section for example in this case i x prime y prime is not zero as a result the principal axis of the cross section will be located uh, with an angle rotated from the current x prime and y prime there are different methods to calculate the angle one method is more circle that is very straightforward if you know what to do in the next video i'm going to talk about how to calculate the principal axis of such a cross section thank you for watching see you in the next video bye